Bugs, bugs, bugs. <laughs> I hate bugs. Um, I, I bet you do too. Well, we got a loads of them in this game. <laughs> and by loads, um, well, I just mean three or four. I, I'm not keeping really track of them. But there's something we have to fix and get rid of. Because with bugs, they can turn away players and just make players like not enjoy the gaming experience you're trying to present. Bugs really are unintended mistakes which you don't intend to make but of course they happen due to a misunderstanding between you and your game or of course the programming you use for your game. So we had one of our viewers post a comment saying they have a bug in their game and they really wanted me to fix it. So I went ahead and, and played the game a couple of times to really find the bugs and boy did I find some bugs. So that's what we're going to be doing this episode, fixing up some bugs. So let's get started. So to get started, we're going to address some of the bugs. The first one, of course, is the ammo pickup. When some people were playing the game, they of course weren't always getting their ammo spawning and they would only have them 15 bullets for the whole game, regardless of what happened. So let's go ahead and fix that first. So as you can see here, we have a script that says when I start game and then just sets the minimum and maximum time that the ammo should take to spawn. And what we're going to do instead is change that. So the first thing we want to do is create a brand new message. And instead of using when I receive start game, we're going to create a new message and we're going to call it spawn ammo. And we're only going to spawn ammo when we receive this message. So let's go ahead and click OK. And then we're going to remove this wait until and get rid of the set minimum and maximum ammo spawn. So now we've gotten rid of them. And then we're going to remove the wait until pistol unlocked equals one because we're also not going to need that. So now our script is just when I receive spawn ammo, we get straight to the point and spawn our ammo in 6 to 12 seconds that's all we need so the next thing we want to do is we're going to change our when i receive start game we're going to change it to spawn ammo and this is very important because we only want to give our player their ammo only when we receive the message spawn ammo so now what we're going to do is duplicate this script so in order to duplicate something you click your right mouse button you click right mouse button and then you click duplicate so that's just a handy trick you might want to know so next we're going to remove this forever script remove the hide script and we're going to set ammo to zero when i receive start game so that's the two things we need to change right here next what you need to do is go to our weapons unlocked indicator and what you want to do here is you want to broadcast the message spawn ammo. So wait until pistol unlock equals one. And then we go ahead and say, player, you can now shoot your pistol. So, so what we're going to do is go to events and broadcast spawn ammo. And we go right here to wait until pistol equals zero equals one. And then that's when we're going to spawn our ammo. So right here is how we're going to broadcast the message spawn ammo. So that should go ahead and fix the bullet glitch we had there with spawning bullets. So let's go ahead and test the game. You hear that? That's an odd sound we're hearing. And I'll remind you what that sound is. If we go to our bullets and we go down over here, we'll see the sound out of ammo. Now, the reason this is actually happening is because we say if ammo is less than one, we play the sound. It doesn't matter what gun we're using. If it's a knife or a pistol, it doesn't matter. It's going to play that sound if we don't have enough ammo when pressing our shoot or attack button. So what we want to do is remove this and then go to operators. So of course, don't remove it from the screen. Just remove it from its place it was previously. And then we want the and operator. And we put this 
right here. And what the AND operator is going to do is say, if two conditions are both true, then you can go ahead and do whatever is inside your if statement. So now we want to say, if ammo is less than one, and this is very important, and then we use the greater than operator. So if we go to our player sprite, we can see that current weapon zero is for our knife. So let's go back to our bullet and we say if current weapon is greater than zero and as long as it's greater than zero then we can play our out of ammo because they were actually shooting a gun not shooting any th a knife you can't shoot a knife unless you're throwing them but there we go that's fixed that little glitch mini <sighs> mini bug we had there a little ant we had there so next what we want to do is fix another bug and it's going to be a bug with our zombie so let's go ahead and click the flag and we'll click a new game we'll wait for one of the walkers to come along and we can find them let's see let's hunt for them. those walkers okay so see the attack If you haven't noticed it, I'll play it again. See the attack? You see that? The zombies attack and sound effects are not in line with the way it decreases the player's health. So let's go down to our zombie and let's edit this. So what you want to do is go ahead and find the sprite where we actually decrease our player's health, the script instead. Um, so right here is the script. And then we want to go to our animation right here. Is our animation script. That's where we handle our animations. So instead of using what we used before, the wait condition, don't throw it away, still keep it. We're going to use it um, in Jiffy. We're going to say, point towards the player and start the sound but instead of just starting the sound if we're touching the player we're going to of course wait but in a different sense not exactly how we did before by waiting 0 0.9 seconds we're going to go to control and get an if statement and we're going to have it cover our start sound all the way to our change health by negative 10 and now let's go to our costumes we want to find something we want to see when the player or whether the zombie is actually attacking our player and it's right here in our sprite number 23 so let's go to our code and then select operators and then get the equals operators and then go to looks and get our costume number yes we're back again with our costume numbers so we want to see if costume number is equal to 23 when the zombie is actually doing its attack then we can go ahead and decrease the health. So after that, we want to wait about 0 0.5 seconds before we do that again, because before we waited 0 0.9, which was a bit too much. So now we're waiting 0 0.5 just to give it some time so that it doesn't decrease too much health more than it actually is supposed to. So let's go ahead and test that and see if that's working correctly. Where's our zombies? The zombo zombo. Ah, there we go. Here's one. Let me walk towards it. That's looking about right. It's actually doing its attack and sound effect when it's attacking me. Well, we have one more thing. And this was the request from our viewer. I'll put the comment in the screen. And you can see what he's asking. He's saying that the health pickup... Um, and health bar aren't healing like it's not healing at a certain level you can only heal at 60 or 70 so I've also experienced that glitch but I have no footage of it of course because I wasn't recording at the time but and also the glitch is somewhat of a rare glitch that I've experienced it doesn't happen on some computers but it does happen on some so the way I'm going to go ahead and fix this is I'm going to go to the health bar and I'm going to just zoom out and zoom back in and we're going to get rid of the health gain 
and health loss we're going to remove those messages from the game and the code and also we don't need to make this so big just going to change it to um, 10. thousand okay so next what you need to do is um change this so we can do this manually instead of switching costume plus one of course if the glitch isn't happening for you you don't need to go ahead and do what i'm doing right now but if the glitch is happening on your computer just follow the steps i'm going to go ahead i'm going to go over right now so the two ways we edit our player's health is with the health pickup and through our zombie so the zombie can decrease our player's health and the health pickup increases our player's health so what we're going to do is go to events and go back to our messages and we're going to say start game we want that message we go to our forever block which is found in control and then we're going to create way too many if statements so duplicate as many times as you can from the top just continuously duplicate and duplicate um, not inside each other, of course. We want them outside each other. We have 8 right now, and then a 9, and then 10. Of course, if you forgot to duplicate, how to duplicate, you right click and then you click on the duplicate button. So now we have 10 if statements. And then what I'm going to go ahead and do is go to operators. And then we're going to put equals operators in each. So we can go ahead and put our equals operators. Dun, 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 dun. There we go, and there we go, and there we go, and last but not least, our last equal operator. So now let's go to our variables, and we want to say if health equals, and we're going to put the health in each operator. So we put the health in each of them. You want them in the front or, or behind it won't matter you will just have to then switch up the values when we're actually putting them in so now we have all our values now we're going to say if health equals to 100 then we're going to say if health equals 90 80 70 60 we already have 50 we we'll go to 40 30 20 and 10. We don't have um, health L equals to zero in this game, so we can just go ahead and leave that be. So now we just remove this, the health gain, we get rid of this script. And then we see our health loss. What we're going to do is take this, go to control and get an if statement, put this here, put the operator inside, and then just remove it. So now what you want to do is start setting our costume numbers or rather switching them so that it display displays the correct health in the health bar so this will continuously um, display the correct health so we switch costume to 100 here next we switch it to 90 we switch it to 80 we switch it to 70 we switch it to 60 we switch it to 50 we switch it to 40 30 20 and 10 so that would be our manual way of actually switching our health so um let's look around is everything working yes it's looking good so let's see if our game is really bug free no little ants no cockroaches let's make sure there are no bugs let's click on the flag new game baby now let's full screen this because we want to have fun Pistol and 15 bullets. Yes, our health bar is showing the correct. Health, of course, for me. And there we go. 
that's the end of this tutorial series i know last episode i said it was the end but we had some bugs to fix bugs to squash step on but now our game is hopefully i'm not sure of that anymore but it's hopefully bug free so i'd like to thank everyone who's made it this far to the tutorial series again and say well done um thank you for watching it through and doing this for yourself making your own game you've made a zombie game your epic zombie shooter and that's it for Konita tutorials uh, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss our next episode where we'll be creating a brand new game so make sure to subscribe for that and turn on notifications see you next time mm -hmm.